Good morning, everybody. I hope today is finding you well. It's a very uh, gloomy, wet, and rainy day here in Murfreesboro, but I'm glad for it because, you know, we need the rain. Uh, so I'm, I'm grateful for it. I'm going to be grateful for the gloom. I'm going to be grateful for the sunshine. I'm going to be grateful for all of it. The Bible tells us to rejoice in the Lord always. It's something that's not a suggestion. It's something that Christians need to do. With that being said, let's go ahead and dive right in. We've got a couple regular contributors um, to this podcast or whatever it's called. And they ask a lot of great questions. And one of them, she writes in, Pastor, I need you to be able to answer a question. I'm having a hard time with my nephew. He's asking me questions like, how in the world could everybody come from Adam and Eve? Meaning the entire world, which was really difficult for me to answer. People need to know this because... A lot of people will say the Bible is a made up story. Well, let's go ahead and first look at the biblical account of it. And, and I'm going to say that um, Paul affirms this all throughout Romans. The New Testament believes this. Jesus believed this. He, te he taught it. Um, that all of creation came from one man and one woman. In Genesis chapter 1. So then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. They will rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the livestock, all the earth, and the creatures that crawl on the earth. So God created man in his own image. He created him in the image of God. He created them male and female. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. Subdue it, rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and every creature that crawls on the earth. So, we see that God created man and woman. Now, I'm going to tell you, there's a big difference between Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. You've got to understand kind of how that's built in order for us to kind of dive a little deeper into this story. So, when we um, look into this, okay, we've got to understand that chapter 1 is a synopsis. Kind of like when you're looking for a review of a movie or a review of a television show or something like that, and it gives you the overview of what the episode's about. This is kind of what Genesis 1 does. It tells you in detail what God did day by day. Now, I'm going to tell you all, there are people who will argue against this, but I believe that when the word yom is used, I know we're going off a little bit of topic, but we need to understand some of these concepts. When the word yom is used, Y-O-M, it's a Jewish word, it literally means a 24-hour period. But when we dive into Genesis chapter 2, we see that Adam was by himself a lot longer than a day. So when God created Adam, Adam created God created Adam in a day, what we're looking at here is God spent some time within the garden. What he did was, uh, he was naming the animals, the, the, the birds, the fish, just as God had told him to. And in Genesis chapter 2, verse 20, it says, The man gave names to all the livestock, the birds of the sky, to every wild animal, but for man, no helper was found as his complement. So among all the, the animals, birds, fish, everything, there was nothing found to complement Adam. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to come over the man, and he slept. God took one of his ribs and closed the flesh at that place. The Lord God made the rib he had taken from the man into a woman and brought her to the man. The man said, This one, at last, is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. This one will be called woman, for she was taken from man. This is why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined or bonds or cleaves to his wife, and they become one flesh. Both the man and his wife were naked, yet felt no shame. At this point, we also need to understand that they weren't procreating. Then the fall of man happened. Now, if we look at it, God created every creature, every man, every animal, two by two. He made them in pairs, male and female. This is something that modern people are trying to even buck up against this system, but this is how God designed humanity, male and female. And so just as uh, the animals all had to come from one source, so too did Adam and Eve become the source of all humans. What does that mean? It means that when they were designed, God made them perfect. He called them very good. He designed them perfectly. They were genetically pure. And so you start with a single mating pair, Adam and Eve. Okay, you have Adam, and I don't, you know, the, the symbol for man, I think, is the arrow thing. 
you have Eve and the symbol is the circle with the upside down cross thing. I don't know why they do that. So how did Adam and Eve procreate? Well, they, of course, in the natural course of history, they slept together as men and women do, and they made male and female. They had children, and those children, when they were old enough, would have had to have paired up. Adam lived some 900 years. Eve must have lived quite a bit while, but during that time, considering this, is that when that first female was 12 years old or thereabouts, she was able to begin to procreate. And so as they started pairing up, they began to procreate. And every single year they were able to procreate because a baby human gestation period is nine months. During that time, more and more humans were able to be created. It doesn't take that long. It doesn't take that long at all. Nine months. So that means every 18 months or so. And I've seen people give birth within t nine to 11 months of having a baby within those time periods they would have been able to have a baby every nine months that means within uh, two years the first female who was able to produce at, from Adam and Eve's line would have had two babies so we're looking at that they could have populated the earth pretty quickly now this is interesting because what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something I normally don't do which is why I'm at my computer today we're going to jump to um, ancientorigins.net, which is a, a kind of like a, a, it looks at human, what they call evolution. This is a secular site. I don't believe they believe that they are uh, Christians at all. But they had an article updated uh, 29 July 2017. Now, they also cite several other articles. This isn't merely one study. This is several studies. I looked online. I found several things that were confirmed this. They said, according to the creation myth, see, they don't affirm, of the Abrahamic religions, Adam and Eve were the first man and woman and the ancestors of all humans. While non-believers refute the idea of God, a God that created human beings in the Garden of Eden, scientific research has revealed that all humans alive today are descendants of one man and one woman who may have lived at the same time over 100,000 years ago. Interesting, right? Now, again, biblical sources versus secular sources, they say different things, they conflict, but here it overlaps. In 1987, studies of mitochondrial DNA, which tracks maternal ancestry, suggested that all human beings were descendant of one woman who may have lived in Africa about 200,000 years or so ago. Similar research has been carried out on the Y chromosome of men, which tracks paternal ancestry from various places, but here the estimates of the research vary quite widely, anywhere from 60,000 years ago to 580,000 years ago. However, in 2013, a study published in the Journal of Science showed that almost every man alive today can trace his origins to one man who lived approximately 135,000 years ago and that this ancient man was alive at the same time as the woman who is known as the mother of all women, providing evidence for an ancient Adam and Eve, popularly known as Y-chromosomal Adam and mitochondrial Eve. So if we go back even to secular sources, this is not just merely one thing. There are several different sources that cite, cite this. Several different scientific studies of our DNA that cite this. All men and all women have come from the same ancestor, not merely according to the scriptures, but also according to scientific research. Which, again, we go back. When we look at, for example, and I know people don't want to think about this, but when we're trying to reintroduce um, certain animals into the wild that have been endangered, that uh, we've bred in captivity, oftentimes what they'll have to do is do breeding pairs from cousins and even siblings before reintroducing these animals. One of the elders of our church came back from uh, Arizona recently, and as, he, as, he's, as he's traveling over the Grand Canyon on the bridge, condors were flying below. When I was a kid, that was near impossible because... They were near extinction. Now, because of breeding pairs and the way in which they even bred among family groups, the condors are coming back. 
So science verifies what the Bible has already told us, that in the beginning, humanity came from one single pair. So if we look, there's evidence, not merely for what the biblical account says, also as we explore more in science. We've got to understand something here. The Bible is not anti-science. Now, much of what I call mainstream science is anti-Bible. Why? Because many mainstream scientists have an agenda they want to push. But what we can look around, and, and with these questions on science and nature, there are, are scientific facts that verify biblical claims on many, many things. So I hope that answers the question. Let me know. Um, those of you who've watched, I appreciate y'all watching today. Um, what do you think? What are your thought process on this? How does it change your perspective on things, seeing that all humanity came from one person? Now, again, all these scientific things have their own theories and their own stories that they make up. And I'm going to tell you, that's what archaeology and everything is. People make up stories based on what they find and what they think happened. The Bible tells us what happened. So you've got to take and weigh the evidence for yourself. You've got to take and see, okay, the Bible says this happened. Science says this happens. How do I reconcile the two? Quite frankly, where's your faith stand on it? You've got to stand upon faith if you're going to be a believer in Christ. If not, you're going to get tossed about by every wind of doctrine. That's from the scriptures. So let me know what you think. Like, share, comment. Let's discuss this. And we'll see you later. God bless you.